recorded. All right, we'll give it just a second and let everybody else jump over. Steph, do you have a lot of new staff or have some of your staff done the pit count before? What, what kind of um, room do we have today? Has done it before. Sherry has done it before. Um, Renee, I'm not sure if Renee has. Um, Paige has done it before, but then we have um, Cassie and Nicole and Charlotte and Taylor, and they're all relatively um, new. Okay. So about half and half, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, good news for those of you who have yeah, done this so before. She will not be here. Okay. Um, the pit count this year should be very similar to last year and the other years that we've done it. So very few changes on from HUD, so that's good. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I will also send out a recording of this as well as all of the PowerPoint material and the documents to everyone, just so you guys have them as well. Um, I'll probably just send them to Stephanie and Stephanie, you can forward them to everybody if that's okay, if that works for you. So, all right, can you guys see my PowerPoint screen? Okay, perfect. All right, um, so welcome. My name is Jessica Pauly. I do the HMIS here um, for our continuum. Um, if you need to take a phone call, leave your desk, whatever, that's absolutely fine. Just please put yourself on mute. You guys have done a really good job about that already. So um, no worries at all with that. If you for some reason have to go to meet with a client or jump off, that's fine. We do have this recorded and we'll um, pass that out to everyone as well, okay? Um, so pit count, what is this? Um, all of the COCs in the state are required by HUD to plan and conduct a point in time count of homeless persons in our area. So our COC is split up into three regions. You guys are over there in the Western region. So when we do a point in time count, you're only responsible for those counties that you guys cover. Um, we have somebody in the chat. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, after we complete that, that count, then we have to submit that data to HUD through the HDX website. HUD keeps track of that information for the entire country and then compiles it to different reports. Um, additionally, our funding level is based on the number of homeless individuals we count, so it's very important we get an accurate count. That count shows HUD, you know, the amount of need that we have in our areas for those that are homeless, so it's important that we make sure we count everybody. Okay. So what do I do first? Um, for those of you who have not done a pit count, this is a really good place to start. Um, before the pit, we would like you to contact your local agencies that you know of who've given hotel vouchers in the past. Uh, the, the reason for this is just to say, hey, we are gonna be doing this count on this day. If you have somebody that's gonna be staying in a hotel that day, please let us know. Um, doing that beforehand kind of starts building that bridge of communication and makes it a little bit easier for you on the day of the pit count. We'd also request that you contact your local law enforcement officials, sometimes probation officers, whoever usually gives you um, referrals for homeless individuals to let them know what day the pit, what day the pit count is, what the pit count is, and then also what we're going to be doing during that pit count. Um, sometimes we have had people call law enforcement and say, hey, I saw so-and-so driving around. Um, so it is kind of nice just to give them a heads up that we're gonna be out and surveying and, and looking at our areas. You can also contact local hotels in your area that you know of have housed individuals in the past to let them know that you'll be contacting them on the pit count day. And then you can review your pit log for locations to visit during the last pit. Um, I believe that Paige keeps those all in a binder somewhere, if I remember correctly from last year. She has all the pit logs from previous. So if you have any questions on where you should be looking, Paige has a, um, all the resources from the past year. Additionally, we are going to ask everyone to be filling out these risk factors forms. Uh, these are really helpful when we're talking to those motel hotel operators. It tries to give us as a COC an idea of the reasons why people are becoming homeless in the first time. So we'll discuss that. I'll pull it up here in just a little bit to show you what that looks like. Um, after you've completed those forms, please email them to me. Changes from last year, there's only one change that HUD made from the way that we're counting since last year. They are requiring more detailed information on the, the age of those individuals we count. So if possible, please get the date of birth for all the clients that we count. 
if somebody does not want to provide their actual birth date, please get their birth year. That way it'll give us the information we need to report on that accurately. All right, so in preparation for the pit count. So this could be a couple of days before, a week before. Uh, make enough copies of your pit survey, which we'll look at that pit survey here in a little bit. Make a copy of your pit log form for each of your staff members and discuss where each staff is going. The reason why we do this is so that we're not double counting the same individuals and we're also making sure we cover as much area in our counties as we can. And then make a plan as to who is counting at what time and in what areas. During the count, safety is a first priority. So do what you feel comfortable with. If you need to wear a mask, social distance, that's absolutely fine. Do what you need to do to be safe. Counting will start with the pit survey form. So I'll show you that in a minute as well. Please, please, please make sure you write legibly. Um, if you are somebody who's known to have uh, a little bit messier handwriting, please use block letters or uh, really pay attention to this. It is hard sometimes to read some of these survey forms, especially if they've been faxed over or emailed from a fax. So please write legibly on all those forms. And then also, please make sure that on every single form, you write the agency, the county, the region, and then the person completing the survey. So that'd be you or whichever other staff member is doing that. The reason for all of those different things is if I have a question I need to go back and verify, it'll let me know who to contact. Um, and also, like we have in the past, we didn't use check boxes for some of the fields and the form to make it a little bit easier to fill out. Point in time survey questions, these are all the same as last year. So where are you staying tonight? We are looking to count for the night of the 25th of January, it's a Wednesday. So if you talk to somebody during the day, you know, say it's 4 p.m. on the 25th, then you would need to ask them, where are you staying tonight? If for instance, somebody came in to your office on the 26th, you are able to fill out a pit survey form if they're saying they were homeless on the 25th. So the night in question we're looking at is where do they sleep on January 25th, okay? How many people are staying together? their name, best way to contact and contact info. If they have more than one, please write down that um, additional information if they have it. Household information and composition, birth date, gender, ethnicity, race, disabilities. Um, if they're a DV survivor or if they're homeless due to domestic violence, a veteran or chronically homeless. And it is important on a lot of these questions, especially with the race, ethnicity, disabilities, that we ask the client those questions and don't just visually um, assess that ourselves. So please make sure that you do ask all the questions on the form. If somebody is not comfortable answering them, that's fine, just leave it blank, okay? Hotel motel vouchers. If we have somebody that we are counting that's staying in a hotel or a motel, that was paid for by a church, your agency, another agency like Salvation Army, the city, any of those things, it is extremely important we have the following information. We need the name of the church and the agency that's actually paying for the room. We also need you to write down, of course, what hotel they're staying at, the address that they're staying at, and then also the address of the church and the agency, their contact name for somebody that works at that agency or that provide that hotel transportation or that hotel motel um, stay. And then also the towns that that agency does serve. Okay. So basically we need all the information for the actual hotel where the client is housed, but we also need all the information for who's paying for that hotel as well. Okay. The chronically homeless question. So one of the questions on the PIT survey form we're going to look at in a little bit talks about chronically homeless. So in order to be able to mark that, yes, this client is chronically homeless, they must be disabled and then additionally have to meet one of the requirements below. Have you slept in any of the locations listed in question one every night for the last year? So basically, were they homeless for an entire year or two? They've slept in any of the locations listed in question one four or more times in the last three years, totaling to at least 12 months. And so I apologize, that is wordy. It comes directly from HUD. But what that means is, is the person disabled and have they been homeless for at least one whole year? 
So January 2022 to January 23 would be homeless for one whole year. Or have they been homeless for four times or more in the past three years that equals 12 months of homelessness? Okay, so if you have anybody that you have questions on, feel free to write a little note to the side of that. Um, if you have somebody that's been homeless multiple times within the last three years, go ahead and kind of jot down how many months total if you're not sure, and we can kind of go over that together. All right, schedule of the count. So ideally, we like to have coverage from sun up, sundown to sun up on the night of the 25th. Sorry, that should be sun up to sundown. Um, Remember, we are focusing on the night of the 25th, okay? Some suggestions on here on how to count. Um, you can work with Paige and Stephanie on that for your agency. We do recommend sometimes counting in four-hour blocks um, to go ahead and contact local churches and agencies to see if they've placed anybody in a hotel, also to use a schedule. So work with your staff um, and, and your supervisors to, to figure out where you're going to be canvassing and at what times. For forms, I do need the forms back to me no later than February 10th. Um, Stephanie, when do you want them to have these forms to page? So if we're doing it on the 25th, let's go with the 3rd of, um, of February. I think we'd give her enough time. Okay, so please go ahead and send all of your forms to Paige by the 3rd of February, and then she'll get them over to me. Okay, questions. Does anybody have any questions before we go ahead and pull up the documents to look at that you guys will be filling out? Okay. And we are going to go ahead and look at our risk factor form first. Okay. All right. Can you guys see that on the screen? I believe so. Okay. Um, all right. So the risk factor form, this is what you will when you're speaking to those um, hotel or motel operators, those front desk people at the hotel, this is what you will fill out for that. We are trying to, or have them fill it out and give it back to you, that's fine as well. We are trying to figure out who, um, how people are becoming homeless, like what is leading to them becoming homeless. So these are just basic questions that they can answer. On average, how many individuals have entered into your facility each month that were homeless? Of, of these homeless individuals, how many are first-time homeless? Do you what reasons do you see say cause them to become homeless? Uh, what is the biggest reason for these homeless individuals to find housing, get back on their feet? Um, and then where would you refer somebody with housing needs? So very simple, five questions. Um, so please talk to those hotel motel operators and see if they'll fill this out for us. Go ahead and send them to Paige and she'll get them back to me. This helps us when we write our grants to talk about those homeless individuals and how we plan to help them find housing, okay? Um, the next form I'm going to show you Hey, Jess, is... before you go on, um, yeah. that form that you just showed, can we do that ahead of time or you want that on the 25th? Yeah, ahead of time is fine. Um, and so, yeah, and I had the question in the chat too from Sherry about can other agencies fill out these forms? Absolutely. Um, anybody that can fill these out that sees homeless individuals, that's perfect. Um, that'd be great. The more, the more information we get coming in from this, the better. So, but yeah, absolutely. You can start filling these out now, um, any time from now up until the pit. And honestly, if you meet with somebody during the year and they've had a lot of homeless first time that they haven't really seen before, feel free to give them one of these forms. So we really focus on it during the pit count, but we try and gather this information all year long. So, so now is fine. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the actual pit form. And so this will be the survey form that you fill out for each of your individuals that you talk to. Okay. 
So this form can be printed on one sheet of paper um, if you want to, that's completely fine. There's also the second sheet of it is actually just additional household members. So feel free to only print out one sheet if you only need it. If you have somebody that has more than four people in their household, feel free just to attach that at next sheet and staple it to it or, or whatever. Um, that's completely fine as well. As we talked about before, the top part is who you are and what agency you're from, basically. So your agency will go here, um, your location, your interviewer. So these are all your names. Um, the region that you're in, you guys are all in the Western region for Illinois Valley your county, and then the time that you are speaking to this individual. Time is important because sometimes we do see multiple forms for the same person from different people. So please put what time in there. That way, if we have somebody that I think is the same, we can kind of verify those times and, and show that that was the same person, okay? Type of location. So this is where the individual is sleeping at. And be as specific as you can for all of these, okay? So if it's an emergency shelter, I don't believe you guys have any emergency shelters in your area. Um, if it was an emergency shelter, you would click that or mark that and then put the name. If it's a voucher motel, then you would put that right there. And then um, transitional housing, you would put that right there. And yes, you're right, um, Sherry, there should be another line here. I'll go ahead and add that on and send it back out that says um, place not meant for human habitation, I think is what it's marked. But we'll make another box here that is um, for us being in a vehicle, abandoned house and all of that. So I will add a couple um, locations to there as well. Um, over here on the right, you see sponsor information. So that is for if somebody's staying at a hotel that's paid for by SSVF or church or any of those things. Okay. So this contact name is the person from the church, the phone number, the address for the church, and then the town served. Right here, it shows how many people are observed staying together. So when you're looking at that, talking to that individual, how many people is in their family? So if that's, you know, four adults and two children or whatever the composition is, this is where you would put that. And then each of these boxes down here needs to be filled out for each individual person, okay? And do the best you can. So if um, the person won't give a full birthday, go ahead and just put the year of their birth. If you're not sure, um, for date of birth, you're, I mean, if you need to put, you know, um, I don't want to say guess, especially with race and ethnicity, it's very important that we don't guess. We just ask them and we do what they mark or what, mark what they tell us to mark. Um, but for date of birth, if they won't give you an age, if you want to put um, teenager, mid-20s, mid-30s, whatever you think for date of birth to give us an idea. Um, additionally, if they won't give you any personal information, please mark down physical description or what they're wearing and where you found them at. The reason for this is because if somebody is counted multiple times, if we have information on like what they're wearing or, you know, they're in a yellow tent on this sidewalk, then we can make sure that we're not duplicating that count. Okay. So if they've got a contact, best way to contact, contact information, and then all of these different um, questions here. Okay. Um, and then here in the other notes, that'd be if, if they weren't giving any physical or if they would not give any information, you could put a physical description here, you know, yellow sleeping bag, yellow tent, whatever, whatever could help us um, de or identify them and make sure we're not duplicating that count. Okay. Any questions on this form? Okay. So I will get that updated with the type of location, and then I will send it back out with the recording. Um, and then we are going to go ahead and look at, I think it's one more form. Okay, so the pit log form, this is something that can also be done ahead of time. I actually recommend it being done ahead of time. And I would also recommend speaking with Paige to see what um, the other log forms have looked like. Um, okay. So for this form, this is just kind of like a, a to-do list slash check mark, you know, checkbox mark, 
list of what to do and who to call. So when you're planning out your pit, this gives you an idea of places that you should look during the count. Okay, so I recommend go ahead and filling this out, location, name of location and address before you go to the pit and then bring this form with you and then filling out time at location and outcome. So for instance, if I sat down today and filled this out and I could put, you know, Casey's gas station at such and such street, public library, um, all those things, fill that out. Then I get to the night of the pit, I'll pull this back out and say, okay, I'm at Casey's gas station, it's 7 p.m. Put that in there outcome, zero homeless individuals, okay? Then I can move on to my next location. So this is just kind of something that you can use to help you stay organized and help to make sure that you get um, all of the places that you've had previous homeless individuals and counted, if counted that you are able to go back and look at those again. Okay. All right, so what questions do we have? I think that's all the forms that I've got to show you guys. Um, do you have any questions? Are you have any concerns? Okay. Well, I will go ahead and save this recording. I will also go ahead and get that updated on the form and send all those back out. If you have any questions in the meantime, or you think of something else later on, feel free to reach out to me. Um, Paige and Stephanie both have my contact information. And um, I will also include my cell phone number in that email that I send out with the updated forms. So that if you have any questions the day of the pit, you're welcome to give me a call as well. All right, thank you everyone. Have a good day.